Hello and welcome back to the Hard West. Today we're going to look at scenario number four, a matter of time. And as I promised you, Cassandra, the only survivor of uh, Grand Inquisitor Cervantes's purge, is now moving to uh, Mexico. We're going to play the scenario as always on hard with injuries and Iron Man. Let's see the what the scenario is about. Destroyed the secret order. Hunted down and killed every last member, all to prove his allegiance. There was only one loose end, now running for her dear life. Cassandra. And although his henchmen quickly caught up, she had a trick up her sleeve. Cassandra could see the future, and that wasn't the day she would die. Interesting. So, we are having Cassandra who can see the future, uh, trying to fight her way against uh, Grand Inquisitor Cervantes, who seems to be the devil's Some right hand. Would save Cassandra and set her free. But first, they needed to distract the mob. We have a lot of uh, enemies there, and uh, our protagonist in this um, in this scenario will be Andrew Harden, a nice, good-looking young guy who apparently has um, a neck for drugs. He carries opium with him, has a volcano pistol, and is using ricochet as abilities. Okay, fair enough. And we have his good friend, the right hand Peko, who seems to be um, a bit of a bigger guy. Uh, Peko has a low aim, low movement, uh, is carrying around a nail gun and massive, massive guns. And uh, Peko is the fat Mexican, I suppose. Uh, so that's going uh, that's going to be an interesting crew so if we were to rescue her oh wait a second what's Peko's special ability nice chain kill wait wait a second I mean look at the hit points here all of them have artificially low hit points and this guy has the chain kill ability I mean you don't need to be a master Sherlock Holmes to kind of assume that that means we're going to uh, chain shot all of them, right? Right. So, let's try to get Peko in a good position. Up here would look nice, but I can see a problem like this here doesn't seem to... This wall here doesn't seem to count as cover. Uh, which means maybe we're better off if Peko starts moving over here. I don't know. Yeah, well. Let's try this rooftop. Okay, let's get everyone in position. Peko has 10 hit points. That's a good start. All right, stick him up. Peko is going to go through this door and then onto the other side. Again, stick him up. Um, okay, we just triggered suspicious, which is not really good. Thank you. 
so I am wondering if I could peg will then slip through this here. Probably not. Well, I don't want to stay inside of the house. This guy here certainly has a suspicion and has a longer, a longer view distance towards Pego than he normally would. Now he went back to normal. Damn, Pego is moving in and out and in and out. Probably shouldn't have taken. Oh, he's now moving. Yeah, he's trailing Pego. That's for sure. Okay, my bad. Which means. We need to change the plan. Can we get up here? Into the second floor? No, we can't. So Peiko could see one, two, three. You can see all of them. But his ability to actually hit them isn't phenomenal. Well, I hope it's enough, so let's give it a go. Starting the chain kill. Peiko begins to pull out his revolver. And the scenario begins. One down. Two down, three down, four down, five down, six down. He can't afford to reload. So Pick was taking his Remy Borgen rifle now. Seven down. Cassandra didn't know the names Eight of the down. saviors. But there was no time for introductions. Nine down. The man who wanted her dead needed to be dealt with. Neither they nor their carrier pigeons could leave that town alive. And we're looking to take down this gentleman. Okay, well, I think Peko could use the opportunity to go to this window and just call it quits for now. Cassandra, on the other hand, could already see that there is someone over here at this building. Uh, this building. I don't want to start a fight with the guys on the other side of the building. So instead, instead, how about we are? How about if we try to take full cover in here? was blatantly stupid why would you 
put yourself into the open. Alright, Pecos reloading. Twice, actually. And Cassandra is finishing the job. There we go. We killed them all. So next, uh, our next job is kill the carrier pigeons. Uh, apparently we want to prevent that anyone uh, knows what's going on here. Oh my gosh. Look at these guys. So apparently they haven't spotted us yet. Which gives me hope. Let's just reload. We're reloading all of our guns. They indeed haven't spotted us yet. Which means we can start with a nice little uh, fanfire shot. What the heck? This turned out to be something more than just corrupt lawmen. Okay, I haven't expected that. Let's try to finish him. Seriously. I think we can't kill this guy. No. Down to one HP. He's regenerating. Well, that's a bad sign. That's the first time we're seeing demons, guys. And... I mean, we've seen one after the ritual the last time, right? But apparently they do have the ability to regenerate. There is a massive problem with not being able to actually hit these guys. No, it's only one damage. That wouldn't do the trick. And I also want to be careful. I don't know how many of them are there. We've seen at least three. This guy is now moving in, which is clever because he will be regenerating whilst we're standing over here. Cassandra thought the front approach looked risky. She wondered if there was another way in. Okay, let's see. So this here seems to be the frontal approach and the game just t told us there might be a different way. So we could move up to here. 
basically take the high ground up here. Fortunately, that window seems to be blocked. And yeah, both of, both of the ways around this house here seem to be blocked. So this here is probably distracting line of sight. Although, generally, maybe not the worst place to be at. Unfortunately, you can't jump down uh, buildings like in XCOM. So being up here means you need to run all the way down here. Well, then we have this building here, which seems to be sealed off. And there is this one door, which is locked. So maybe we need to find a key or something. If we could go in get into this building, or wait a second, there's this long hallway. Yeah, we're, we're taking the long hallway. Peiko, you need some cardio, my friend. Too many calories for you anyways. this found a key uh-huh okay maybe it's the one for for the door I've seen an, another yeah look at that maybe we can find even more here found valuables okay so these things seem to be like secret, uh, uh, secret objects. Look at that, beautiful. Do we have m more of the, uh, those. Whatever found valuables means, but it seems beneficial to loot all of these crates. Found valuables, okay. Do we have any further crates? Like nothing in here. That seems to be barren. No, nothing here. There's another one over here. I think it's worthwhile to get up on this high ground here. There seem to be a lot of hidden stashes up there. Can't open this door. That's unfortunate. There was a back door, but it required a key. Good, so we know that we could move along of this ledge here. Open the back door pass uh, passage. Okay. I didn't know. To, uh, I didn't even know that there are so many hidden stashes. Maybe I've over uh, overseen so, uh, some of the one uh, the ones in the previous campaigns. Good to know that the game places those stashes.
All right, let's open the door. Not sure what the enemy does. They seem to be waiting a lot. We found further valuables. Excuse me. So I'm thinking, what's the best plan of attack here? We clearly have like this upper uh, high ground, which seems to be a really good idea. But so what? Who's? Uh, how are we flanking? Like if they are standing in cover. Excuse me. If they are standing in cover and happen to be uh, to be regenerating. We need to have someone who is taking the front uh, front entrance, and uh, that someone is going to be you, Andrew. So let's get Andrew to the front entrance and see if we can flank with him. Paco's taking the high ground here. And let's make sure that we're not going in too fast. So Paco's moving over here. Paco can see the pigeons from here. That's fine. Well, let's make sure everyone has reloaded their we uh, their respective weapon. Paco certainly can reload more. And I think we're ready for an attack. The enemy is uh, becoming a bit cocky, it seems. He's standing in the open ground, almost asking to be shot. There we go. Hit for f uh, five damage. Great. We're moving in. And let's start killing these pigeons. First one down. Oh, look at you. You didn't like that, did you? I don't know if I, I, if I, I don't know if I like uh, the fact that they are moving in our direction. Let's start hitting this guy. First shot, he got 30 luck. Second shot, that should deplete all of his luck. Very good, which means we can finish him from here with a nice little shot from Peiko. There we go. Let's 
65% with the pistol. And they are just barely out of range for a nice little shotgun shot. They continue to rush in like this. I am going to use the shotgun. They immediately decide to back up. Okay. Good enough. By the way, the Deadly Daring, although it shoots twice, is just a really, really bad weapon. We're reloading our gun. And let's kill the second pigeon. The birds were no more, but the Inquisitor's men still posed a threat. Moving up. Okay, we're still looking at two of them. The one of them seems to be suicidal. He's just running out and flailing, uh, guns blazing. Which gives Peko the perfect shot. There we go. Guy down. Let's reload. We can flank this guy here. Oh, that's a difficult position because here he can start regenerating. That's a difficult position. Someone would need to climb up into the onto the first floor or alternatively Alternatively we're going to flank around this corner That works as well Take a moves up even though it's only half cover. That's still good enough. I mainly want to prevent that uh, he is regenerating, so we're currently draining his luck. Okay. Can we hit him from the side? No, we can't. We can start dealing enough damage though. This here is at least draining his luck, so he's taking enough damage every round. <clears throat> his luck is gone. We should be able to hit him, but that's only again two damage. The regeneration comes really uh, comes in really handy once they are in cover. All of the three shots missed. Damn.
Moving in further. There we go. With their adversaries dead, there was no one left to bear witness to what happened that day. Okay, an interesting first mission. I think that the body count like increases the further we're getting into uh, into the game. Like that was the first mission, and we killed about 20, 25 enemies. Look at that! Yet another Two mechanic. Three cognitions as servants of the protector. Their employer was a friend of the order Cassandra once belonged to. The Protector offered shelter and whatever help Cassandra required. She didn't want shelter. She wanted to rid herself of her gift. Hardin assured her the Protector could help her with that as well. But to reach him, they would need to cross a river and sail across a bay. Okay, here we go. Hard led Cassandra to the ferry that he and Peiko had used to cross the river from the west. The stench of death was, uh, of death was everywhere. The ferry itself was uh, no more, and neither was the ferryman. Someone had butchered him and stood his body across the riverbank. They wouldn't be crossing here anytime soon. We examine the scene. Somebody carved the word Aripient into the ferryman's chest. Cassandra knew this could only be the work of Joaquin Perez, the Inquisitor's mad dog. Meanwhile, Harden contemplated searching the man's body, or what was left of him. Uh, she let Harden take whatever he found on the body. Harden uh, pocketed some cash out of the ferryman's necklace, uh, then he suggested they might find transportation at the local inn and heading in this direction. What could possibly go wrong? I absolutely like the precognition. Well, this is a cool feature, but I don't know what exactly it entails. Um, I like that every uh, scenario you have this little mini game or extra effect whether it's research or precognition or whatever it is. We definitely need better weapons. Um, as it stands, we don't have them. Let's take a look at our cards. Well, we're short on cards as well. Uh, maybe we're giving the cards to Peiko for his extra movement. And the plus five aim and movement wouldn't hurt him, so he's not that slow anymore. The inn was a uh, was a peace. Uh, the inn was a peaceful cantina, and the rest stopped for weary travelers at the edge of the wilderness. Cassandra was filled with foreboding. She knew she would need to scope out the area and wait her choices before proceeding. Um, a local card shop was dealing three card monte. Why would she start playing cards? Well, it's probably because she's just like this gamble addict. I like it. Cassandra and Hardin observed the uh, the cards sharp, who was all um, smiles until he caught the sight of the ferryman's amulet. He quickly collected his cards and walked away. Cassandra would not be winning any cash tonight. The inn was as bustling as ever. She asked for transportation across the river. The locals uh, told Cassandra the nearest official uh, river crossing was Yuma in Arizona. Unfortunately, the weekly train to Yuma left early that day at 3.10. She wanted to uh, go earlier, but she'd have to find uh, someone with a boat willing to take her. They allowed um, as the best place to find someone with a boat would be down the riverbank campsite. The innkeeper also had a couple of items to sell. Uh, for instance, dirty shoes, which absolutely makes sense. A musket, which is a kick-ass weapon. I think we should definitely get that one. But we're short on cash. Like this time... 
We are very short on cash. Let's sell the de deadly Derringer. And here we go. Still a positive trade. The musket itself is definitely worth the effort. She doesn't have the necessary aim to deal with it. And quite frankly, I think that we should make him the sniper. Um, short of, uh, short of uh, sort of shotgun and the musket. And Cassandra just gets the volcano pistol, which is an all around uh, good weapon. Single shot, five damage. Pretty good. Um, he has plus five, uh, plus ten aim. That's good. And we do have sturdy shoes for some extra movement, which I think our um, big guy Peiko could use. Okay. Cassandra and her companions spent hours walking at the banks of the river but found nothing. Cassandra shed a few tears of hopelessness which led her to another pre-monition. Um, uh, pre she looked, uh, she took a deep breath and explored the vision. Yeah, we wanted to do that. Images flashed before Cassandra's eyes. She saw dark until the boat crossing the river in silence. She looked at uh, the night sky above the boat and made out the North Star. Though the vision was over as, sh as soon as it appears, Cassandra knew she could pinpoint the boat's location. I like it. Currently, apparently, our precognition is down. Seems like it is some sort of uh, an ability that costs her energy, but that's fine. All right, a clan side low profile smuggler boat with, was beached at the shore. The smugglers had set up a camp in the nearby cave. Harden said they should be careful not to leave any witnesses. Cassandra worried that they, uh, if they killed the smugglers, the bodies would attract the attention of the Inquisitor's chief manhunter, Joaquin Perez. Harden said killing the smugglers before stealing their property was still safer. Cassandra decided that they should silently murder uh, the smugglers and steal the boat. Now, she's, she's kind of this good, uh, but almost naive uh, uh, um, uh, individual that is seeing the good in others. So I play her as the good aligned. Andrew is now affected by a shredded hand. Well, the group settled off. A lone smuggler sently ran out and started shooting. Har uh, Harden was wounded, but uh, the party uh, were soon rowing downstream towards the swamp hideout. Arden and Cassandra and the rest of the party into the six uh, swamps that lined uh, the mouth of the river. Amidst the lush greenery, there was an uh, artificial island, Harden said. It had been built long ago by a non-extinct native civilization. And that uh, he has taken over the spot of stockpile supplies and Harden moored that the boat, uh, that the boat to the island and began filling the hold with useful items. He explained. Uh, that he could proceed to the Protector's Island whenever Cassandra was ready. And I think that's pretty much where we are going to um, continue the next time. We're about to have the second fight. Um, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed what you've seen, leave a comment down below how you like Cassandra so far and give it a thumbs up.